Okay, guys, uh, welcome back. So uh, we are, we will continue to discuss Luenberger Observer. Uh, and what we will do is we will take a look at an example. Okay. So, uh, what we will show is that if the system is given uh, directly in observable canonical form, in fact, designing of an observer with uh, the given specifications will be very easy. Okay. Uh, given the system in its observable canonical form, canonical form, the design of design of the observer uh, becomes relatively easy or trivial let's say okay trivial okay here's our example and uh, this example is a two by two system oh sorry uh, let's say uh, second order system uh, second order system given um, g of s the close uh, the transfer function is given s plus 10 and the poles are s plus 2 and s plus 5 so question is uh, design a state observer for the system for the system such that that uh, the, the error states uh, are asymptotically stable stable with uh, poles poles meaning uh, the error state poles right s1 and 2 is equal to minus 10 okay remember what does that mean uh, if the error states are asymptotically stable that means um, that observer states uh, observer states asymptotically converge Uh, asymptotically converge to to the system states system states with um, convergence dynamics convergence uh, dynamic determined by by s1 and 2 okay so the given uh, poles actually determine what's going to be the uh, dynamics of uh, this convergence okay so uh, let's expand uh, g of s so g of s uh, is is s plus 10 over s square plus 7s plus 10 this is a second order system okay so uh, this corresponds to a two by two uh, system matrix right uh, second order order system uh, let us remember what is the observable canonical form observable canonical form so in the observable canonical form we have x dot is equal to uh, we have 0 uh, minus a2 the denominator coefficient we have 1 and minus a1 times x 
plus our B is composed of B2 and B1, which are the coefficients of the numerator, and Y is equal to uh, 0 and 1 times X. Okay? So let's uh, apply that to our given numerical uh, values. So we have, uh, in this case, our system becomes x dot equals uh, 0 uh, minus 10. Minus 10 is coming from here, right? Uh, 1 and minus 7. Minus 7 is coming from here. x plus. Now the B matrix is coming from the numerator coefficients. So it's going to be uh, 10 and uh, 1 times u and y is equal to 0 1 x so this is our uh, observable canonical form okay remember uh, that uh, observable canonical form actually is uh, always observable always uh, fully observable So let's verify that. Um, remember that the observability matrix is um, C and CA. Let me calculate CA over here. CA is equal to 0, 1, and our A matrix 0, minus 10, 1, and minus 7. So when we multiply these two, uh, we get uh, 0 times 0, 1 times 1 uh, is equal to 1. Uh, 1 times minus 10, sorry, 0 times minus 10, 1 times minus 7, so I have minus 7 here. Okay, so what is the observability matrix? Uh, it's C, which gives me 0 and 1, and CA, which is 1N minus 7. Okay, what is the determinant, uh, determinant of O? is equal to 0 times minus 7 minus uh, 1 times 1 which is equal to minus 1 and that is different from 0 okay so it is verified to be fully observable okay in fact we don't need to do this because we know that uh, if we have uh, observable canonical form we don't expect uh, the system uh, not to be uh, fully observable. Okay? Okay, so let's continue with uh, our observer design uh, problem. Okay, so uh, the error states, error states, uh, dynamics, uh, we know that uh, they are determined by A minus LC matrix, E dot is equal to A minus LC uh, e. Uh, here L is uh, unknown, right? In fact, it is the problem of finding out L1 and L2 uh, is equivalent to the design of the observer, okay? So what is LC with uh, these two unknown variables L1 and L2? C is 0 and 1. So that gives me a matrix 0 L1 0 L2 uh, so what is A minus LC is a matrix where I have uh, 0 over here uh, minus 10 minus L1 over here 1 and minus 7 minus L2 over here now the interesting thing about this uh, A minus LC matrix is that if you uh, look at it carefully, you will see that uh, this is still in uh, observable canonical form. Okay, it has exactly the same structure uh, where you have the coefficients over here and uh, just 0 and 1 uh, in the remaining 
uh, entries, okay? So it's still in the observable canonical uh, form. Okay? So uh, now we can do this. Now, what is the desired, uh, desired um, uh, dynamics? Well, uh, we are given that we want S1 and 2 to be minus 10. And that means that we want a desired characteristic equation that is uh, S plus 10 times S plus 10. And this is a polynomial that is uh, S squared plus 20S plus 100. So uh, now if this is the desired characteristic equation, uh, we can still put this into uh, the observable canonical form. So this corresponds to corresponds to um, another which we might call desired um, observable canonical form. <coughs> And uh, that's, let's call this a tilde. And that is directly from the denominator polynomial. We can uh, construct the A matrix, as you know, right? 0 minus 100, which is this coefficient, and 1 and minus 20, which is this coefficient over here. Okay? So we have uh, basically the the desired poles specifying uh, a desired um, observable canonical matrix A tilde and uh, another uh, matrix A minus LC which is parametrized in terms of uh, L1 and L2 and essentially these two needs to be equal to each other. So we want A minus LC to be equal to A tilde uh, as a requirement or I would say is required okay required but since the two matrices have exactly the same structure the only thing I need to equate is the the terms that includes the L1 and L2 term so what I can uh, extract from here is that I know that minus 10 minus L1 has to be equal to minus 100 and the good thing is that this first term is only a function of L1 so uh, when I make this uh, equation it directly gives me uh, L1 which is equal to 90 okay so the equations are perfectly decoupled okay each equation actually gives me one of the L's so minus 7 uh, minus L2 is actually equal to minus 20 and that also gives me L2 to be equal to 13. So this uh, essentially completes uh, completes uh, the design of the observer. Okay. Now we can, uh, you know, uh, we don't need to, but we can also verify this results, uh, result in another way to uh, kind of uh, show us that uh, we have the correct result, okay? So let me try to do that. This result uh, can be verified. In fact, this second way of uh, solving this is not limited to the observable canonical form, okay? And in fact, I'm going to use it to solve another example where the state space system is not given in observable canonical form, okay? So what is what we have is that the desired uh, uh, characteristic equation uh, is the same uh, characteristic equation 
which is uh, still q tilde is equal to s squared plus 20s plus 100. And the observer characteristic equation, observer characteristic equation, equation as a function of uh, the unknown parameter uh, as a function of of unknown l1 l2 can be calculated uh, remember q of s is equal to the determinant of si minus uh, the observer uh, system matrix so that is minus a plus lc okay and that is equal to the determinant of let us try to calculate that si is this matrix minus uh, a minus lc matrix is given by 0 minus 10 minus l1 and 1 minus 7 minus l2 Uh, which is equal to the determinant of, if we calculate the inside, uh, we will have S10 plus L1 minus 1 S plus 7 plus L2. So uh, we will get a polynomial of S, which is a function of L1 and L2. Okay, so uh, what is this? Let's calculate the determinant s times s plus 7 plus l2 minus uh, minus 1 times uh, 10 plus l1. Okay, so uh, that gives me s squared plus 7s plus uh, l2s uh, minus minus plus plus 10. Uh, plus L1. So that is equal to S squared plus 7 plus L2 S uh, plus 10 plus L1. Okay? So uh, that is my Q of S and that is needs to be equal to Q tilde of S. Right? This is needed because we want uh, the observer to behave uh, according to the specified uh, set of poles. So when I make this uh, uh, equality, okay, and we know that uh, Q tilde of S is given by S squared plus 20S plus 100, basically what I have is exactly the same. 7 plus L2 has to be equal to 20. L2 needs to be equal to uh, 13. And also, uh, we need to have 10 plus L1 to be equal to 100. And therefore, L1 needs to be equal to 90, which is exactly the same result. Now, uh, but what we have here, again, um, because of the observable canonical form, uh, these, uh, so the observable canonical form, canonical form, resulted in in decoupled decoupled equations decoupled equations decoupled equations means you don't need to solve them uh, as a system of equations but each equation actually gives you one of the variables okay so that makes it uh, quite easy now let me show you one uh, other example uh, which uh, is in uh, not in a canonical form and let's see uh, that this second approach we can easily use it uh, to solve um, uh, or try to solve it uh, it for a non-canonical form but we will get a set of equations that uh, needs to be solved uh, as a system okay another example uh, system not system not in uh, observable canonical form okay here we go we have a matrix 
given as 2, 1, 1, 3. B matrix is given as uh, 1 and 1. And the C matrix is given as uh, minus 1 and 1. Now the system is not in uh, observable canonical form, so this time we need to check, need to check uh, that system is is completely observable, observable. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what we have. So we have C times A given by minus 1 and 2, if you do that multiplication. Uh, observability matrix is C and CA. That gives me uh, minus 1 and 1 and minus 1 and 2. So determinant of uh, O, determinant of the observability matrix is given by uh, minus 1 times 2, which makes minus 2, minus uh, minus 1 times uh, 1. Okay? So, uh, this is equal to minus 2 uh, plus 1 equals to minus 1, and that is different from 0. So, that is a non-singular matrix. So, uh, we have... Uh, a system that is completely observable. Now it is interesting to uh, discuss what happens if the system is not completely observable. Um, remember that complete observability guarantees a solution uh, for uh, the observer design problem. So it guarantees that the system of equations that we will get in the end uh, will be um, solvable. But if it's not completely observable, uh, it might be interesting to look at what kind of difficulties uh, might arise from that. Okay, but suffice it to say that uh, in this case, we don't, uh, it's not guaranteed that we will have a solution to the observer design problem. Okay, so uh, let us calculate. Um, so what is LC uh, in order to construct a uh, we need to find A minus LC. So LC is equal to, again, L1 and L2 are uh, unknown parameters. Uh, minus 1 and 1 is the C matrix. So this gives me uh, minus L1, uh, L1, minus L2, L2. So you see that L1 and L2 becomes... Uh, occupies the entire square matrix in this case. So A minus LC uh, becomes uh, 2 plus L1, 1 minus L, L1, 1 plus L2, and 3 minus L2. Okay? So uh, remember uh, that we want still the same uh, dynamics for the observer. We want uh, S12 is equal to minus 10 uh, for the observer. So uh, Q tilde of S, which is the desired uh, characteristic equation for the observer, is still the same. And it is also equal to um, essentially the uh, characteristic equation of the observer which is parametrized on L1 and L2. So uh, determinant of SI minus A plus LC which is the dynamics of the observer uh, that will come out to be uh, sorry uh, let me put determinant here again so that's going to be equal to the determinant of the matrix S minus 2 minus L1, uh, L1 minus 1, uh, and then minus 1 minus L2, and uh, S minus 3 
plus L2. Okay. So we need to find uh, this determinant as a function of L1 and L2, and we will need to equate this uh, to the desired characteristic equation and try to solve for L1 and L2. So let's try to do that. Uh, we cross multiply the terms, right? So we will have S minus two minus L1 multiplying S minus three plus L2 uh, minus uh, so we have minus 1 minus L2 uh, times uh, L1 minus 1. So uh, that's going to be equal to uh, S squared plus uh, L2 minus 3 times S plus uh, minus 2 minus L1 times S. Uh, and then uh, it minus the product of these two terms will be L1, L2 uh, let me verify whether I have some error in my notes here okay so I will make a correction here uh, let's erase this last term okay so uh, this actually corresponds to the product of these two terms over here. So that's going to be equal to minus um, uh, L2 uh, minus 3 times uh, 2 plus L1. We are still in the first part of this, uh, of this uh, expression. And plus uh, the remaining two terms multiplied, L2 plus 1, uh, and L1 minus 1. So this is going to give me uh, S square uh, plus we have L2 uh, minus L1 and the combination of minus 3 and minus 2. So uh, L2 minus L1 minus 5 times S and no more S terms remaining here. But we have uh, minus so I have uh, L1, L2, minus 3, L1, uh, plus 2, L2, minus 5. And from here, I have L1, L2, minus L2, uh, plus L1, minus 1. Okay. So uh, when these are combined, okay, so I will have here, so S squared plus uh, L2 minus L1, this first term, and then I have minus L1, L2, um, plus 3L1, minus 2L2, plus 5, plus L1, L2, uh, minus L2 plus L1 minus 1. Okay, so I will need to combine all of these terms together. So let's try to do that. So L1 and L2 uh, cancels out with this one. So I have 3L1 uh, and plus L1. So I have 4L1 And I have uh, minus 2L2, minus L2, so I have minus 3L2, and I have plus 5, minus 1, and that gives me uh, plus 4. So what I have here is S squared plus this term, which is unchanged, uh, and then I have 4L1 minus 3L2 plus 4. Okay, this is my uh, Q of S. So uh, we again need, remember that uh, we need Q of S uh, equals to Q tilde of S. So that means the polynomial coefficient have to be equal to each other. So I have uh, basically minus L1 plus L2 is equal to 25. 
okay, is my first uh, equation, okay, and I also have minus, uh, uh, sorry, 4L1 minus 3L2 is equal to uh, 96, is the second equation. Okay, so these two equations has to be solved uh, as a system. So, uh, now obviously you can just uh, eliminate one of the variables, express it in terms of the other one and solve for the remaining variable. You can do many things. Uh, the thing I will try to do is I will try to solve this using uh, Gaussian elimination. Uh, which is a more general method because you can use it uh, for systems that are of uh, higher order, okay? Uh, as, a, uh, as an example, uh, use uh, Gaussian elimination. Uh, so that is also known as Gauss-Jordan elimination, if you remember, to solve this system. Okay, so in order to do that, you put this into uh, or you visualize it uh, in matrix form, uh, right? So this is minus 1, 1, uh, 4, 3, multiplying the unknowns, L1 and L2, uh, and that is equated to uh, the right-hand side, which is 25 and 96. So the way we solve such a system is that we... Uh, generate an augmented matrix uh, from the left hand side and the right hand side okay so uh, we put a separator here for uh, sorry this was minus three okay uh, four uh, minus three and 96 okay so uh, now we uh, multiply the first row by a minus one so that we have one over here. Remember the way uh, we perform Gaussian elimination is that uh, we need to reduce this, this part uh, to identity matrix using elementary uh, row and column operations. Okay, actually row operations. So once this part becomes uh, an identity matrix, the, uh, the part that is on the right hand side will become the solution for L1 and L2. So we have uh, 1 minus 1 uh, minus 25. This is unchanged, uh, but I will also divide this by minus uh, 3. So uh, Okay, so I, in my notes, I have skipped a couple of, uh, so I will also um, uh, multiply this by four, the first row by four and subtract from the second row, okay? So that this actually becomes zero. Uh, when this uh, is multiplied by four and subtracted from this, that becomes minus three uh, plus four, uh, which becomes 1, and when I multiply this by uh, 4 and subtract it from, so, uh, from the second uh, row, okay, this becomes, uh, okay, let me multiply it by 4, uh, right, so this becomes uh, uh, minus 100, okay, so minus 100, and I'm subtracting from here, so, uh, but this is minus 100 subtracted from 96, so we have 196 uh, in, in here, okay? So we have almost the identity matrix. All I need to do is add the second row to the first row, okay? So that I will have uh, 1 and uh, 0, 0 and 1 here. When I uh, add the second row to the first row, uh, we need to have uh, 196 minus 25. I have 171 
and 196 uh, in here okay so this has become the identity matrix and this becomes uh, equal to L1 and L2 okay so uh, what I have here is that L1 is equal to 171 and L2 is equal to 196 so the uh, the extra difficulty uh, extra difficulty was that uh, we needed to solve needed to solve uh, a coupled coupled system uh, of equations another interesting question uh, apart from that we are solving a, a coupled linear system of equations another interesting question is what hap what would have happened if this l1 l2 term uh, did not cancel each other okay so if you're curious about that uh, you can also try to uh, for example consider a non-observable uh, system and see whether uh, you end up this uh, nonlinear term remaining uh, making the solution of L1 and L2 uh, even harder. Okay, so I'm going to break at this point uh, and we will continue uh, in the next video. Okay, to be continued.